Good afternoon, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Sorry, light is bad. I thought that today, being the 31st of January, would be a good day to do a bit of a garden tour. So these garden tours are going to really benefit me next year in, a, in an ability to understand what I should be expecting um, and and what happened so this year we had a lot of rain in november which has caused some issues this so far so uh, normally i would get a second flush of tomatoes on most of my plants this year i'm not going to uh, this year we've got some blight which i'll give you a look and um, lots of shield bugs some tomato hornworms it's quite a bit of damage done to the tomatoes at the moment so what we're getting now is going to be the last of it i don't think we're going to get another flush of fruit which is fine we'll pull them out and we'll put other things in their place. So the tomatoes, I'll show you what we've got left here, which isn't very much, and have a quick chat about the types of tomatoes and what I have, my observations for this year of what the types that I've grown. So let me spin you around. Okay, so I grew uh, two different types of determinate tomatoes this year uh, on these middle, on these bottom rows. I grew at tomato called a totem which are these more um, bush like compact ones here and ES58 which are these slightly taller but still determinate tomatoes now these are a um, uh, one of the original highest tomatoes apparently now I've been really happy with these ES58s they have grown some really large really meaty tomatoes um, they're obviously right at the last legs now and next year I probably will I let them go for about four or five liters per plant I probably will drop that to two or three next year to increase the tomatoes so we've got a lot of bug damage a lot of pest pressure happening at the moment like uh, might not load here for you let's see if we can get it to focus oh, it doesn't want to focus oh, can't seem to get it to focus one-handed um, we've got a, a fair bit of blight going on on the tomatoes and on the plants themselves and we've got a lot of damage like this that is obviously something really chomping at the plants now so I, I've sort of given up on trying to control it anymore it's just gotten a little out of hand but I was really happy with the ES58 and I've kept seeds for that and I will definitely grow that again next year these indeterminates were tropics and they're supposed to be a nice uniform uh, shape tomato which they are they are all these sort of a nice round shape but um, again we're having some significant pest pressure we've got these shield bugs in here which there we go the shield bugs in there which are a sapping a, a sucking insect which are causing issues and i'm having a lot of problems with um, hornworms as well which this one looks like it's had a, a hole taken out of it as well um, so like this one looks pretty perfect and they are a, a uniform round slicing tomato they've been they've been quite good producers but they stagnated a little bit at us at a height and haven't been huge um, producers and then we've got this blight issue so all the tops are dying off so I've started topping them all to allow the fruit that is good on them to ripen another one of those shield bugs there and they smell if you squish them so you um I just want to get rid of them I need to spray but um, I haven't had a chance to do any spraying so so yeah very uniform nothing's focusing for some reason There we go. Oh, now I dropped one. So a very uniform round tomato, slicing tomato. It's not particularly meaty. It's got some nice open membranes, um, but tasty enough. I planted some Rouge de Marmand tomatoes, which are these ridged beefsteak style tomatoes. Uh, been a bit hit and miss. Haven't been overly impressed with them. They're not a particularly significant size, not a particularly great yield. The plants have died off early. I, I don't know. I, I'll probably give them one more go um, but we'll see and then these ones here are reason traub and these are lovely these are look we have a this you see that there let's see if I can get that to focus that I 
there we go that's a 28 spotted ladybug which is an asian ladybug and you don't want them they do not consume bugs they eat the plant so if you see them you squish them um, so yes this is a reason trawl and they have these lovely clusters big trellises though the plant's struggling a little bit now so we'll see if these of course the sun's come out now which has made it even harder to get things to focus but um they have these lovely clusters of tomatoes uh quite extensive ones and they're a really pleasant tasting tomato i'll definitely try them again um and this one here on the end is a rouge a rouge de mama end as well and it's done a lot better than those other ones over there it's had some nice fruit on it so that's what they sort of look like with the real nice ridged top on them up the back is my asparagus bed which is completely overgrown with grass we need to get in here and clean all this up um, it's just been so hot lately that we've kind of avoided the garden when we can this row of tomatoes didn't do very well uh, they were the last ones I put in so I'm wondering if they stunted a little bit in the in the um, pots or I'm not entirely sure or maybe something about this particular bed maybe it's getting not enough sunlight not sure but this bed has not done as well as others so we have a couple of Tommy Toe plants which are always a, a good um, stable large size cherry they, they're good producers in general there's a few of those and then we had some pink bumblebees which are these lovely pink and green striped ones they're very tasty and they're a pretty good producer um, we got some of these blueberry ones which are blue and green when they're ripening and then they go to red on the top afterwards really not having much luck with camera angles here I'll have to see how it looks when I'm editing it but they go they end up really nice and red and blue really nice and red and blue when they're ripe they're quite tasty and quite a good producer as well I planted some basic beef steaks which we don't we never have much luck with to be honest um, I decided to give them another go because we really like beefsteak tomatoes but they've the blights hit them hard and they, they haven't been much producing much at all and then on the end here we have some of the purple so they are a dark red purple when they're ripe and they're just a cherry tomato and um, they volunteer each year so they grow well here so it was worth putting one in this side here is my determinate slash paste tomatoes though the Roma seem to have taken off quite tall and I would probably grow them again but they're a much better producer than some of the other paste tomatoes and I haven't had too much problems with blossom end rot or anything with these and they ripen up nicely they're a nice versatile tomato they can be eaten just as fresh tomatoes or used as paste tomatoes so they've done quite well um, they're ripening up in nice little clusters now uh, and the plants are again struggling but they're still pushing the ones out that are ripening I then had Amish paste tomatoes which have done okay but they're quite a small tomato um, and the plant definitely doesn't go much taller there is a fair bit of fruit on them still but how much ripens I'm not real sure uh, we did have some problems with blossom end rot in the Amish paste but not excessive um, the next lot of paste tomatoes are the San Marzano's though and we lost I want to say at least 60% of these crops just to blossom end rot and if you have a look the, we have whole trellises that not that you can see because the the angle of the sun but whole trellises of them that just die off um, so I won't be growing the San Marzanos again this is the second or third year that I've given them a go and whilst they've got a fair bit of production and they're slightly larger than the Amish paste they just I have 
the whole trellises blossom and rot and go yuck and they just they take up a lot of space for for not much help the other variety so this is more cherry tomatoes on this side and the other variety that i like so we got more tommy toes and stuff which are lovely but are these here which are a gardener's delight and they do these really long trellises of tiny little shiny um, tomatoes and they're a, a very tasty little tomato with the significant trellises the plant again they struggled a little bit but they had plenty of these little tiny um, shiny cherry tomatoes nothing wants to focus of course so they have do these really long trellises of them and then we had more determinants here which have struggled I won't grow these totems again they're too too close to the ground as well so we have a lot of um, pest damage because they're so close to the ground we do these bush tomatoes too, these ripple currants, and every year I say I'm gonna try and control them a little bit better, and every year I fail. So it doesn't seem to matter. They just keep on going and going, and they do these dozens of little clusters of these bright red currant tomatoes, and we just come through and collect them all, and they're very tasty. Um, and just they just keep on producing as parts of the plant die off. You, as you can see, you get fresh growth that comes through. So we just keep pushing it back on the bed, and it does what it does. Through here were my sunflowers. I harvested them yesterday. I'll um, share some footage of us pulling all the seeds out of them. They weren't the type that I thought they were. So the seeds are the black seeds, not the black and white, and they're not really great for um, peeling and eating, which is unfortunate. We did peel them all as a uh, something to do and we um, will give them to the animals um, but my sunflowers don't get particularly large I think because our ground is underneath these beds is hard clay and sand and they need more depth so as our ground improves I'd imagine we'll get slightly better cropping of those um, and through here we have our Gorgeous zinnias, pretty green ones, comfrey, borage, and then that big jungle that is our asparagus. Now the garden seriously needs some work at the moment. We find it really hard. This time of the year is so hot, but it's when the maintenance is required. So it's we haven't been able to find that happy medium there. So um, all the silver boot was cut right back, and we've got some new growth which we use as it comes through, but uh, it needs to be pulled and replanted got a bed of uh, turmeric and ginger and horseradish here which is going well and then a bed of leeks which are doing okay but not superb let me get rid of these spider webs around here before I walk through them and then we have Jerusalem artichokes in that back bed and they're flowering it's really pretty the peppers have been really heavily eaten. Oh, let me get this big. Um, the, all the growth points are being consumed before they have a chance to do anything, which is really frustrating. Uh, some of them have just been completely eaten away and there will be nothing from them. Um, are getting some peppers but not very much uh, some jalapenos but again not very much we've got this is the Aji pineapple uh, Aji lemon I think that is um, going through there which is doing okay um, and then the sweet temptation uh, no not sweet temptation uh, yeah I think the sweet temptations these ones which are very pretty but I'm not sure whether the chilies are doing the right thing or not they're going purple which seems correct but there also seems to be shriveling some of them so I'm not sure how that's working um, but yeah all the 
all the growth points keep being you can see here if I can get it to focus all the growth points keep being consumed so the plants are just dying off without fruiting which is really really frustrating so we have a few onions left but look at this see look something has decided that it wanted to dig in there so those onions won't be doing any more and it's been happening a lot so we've got some onions here that are still going but a lot of them um, pests and whatever else is really causing issues we have a bunch of beets in amongst all these weeds here that need to be pulled um, that they're a good size ready to be pulled up um, so there's still a few of those in this bed the path really needs to be cleaned up there and all the zucchini are still going they need another prune and another spray but they're still producing the butternut pumpkins are doing really well still some of them died off and we pulled the, and we cut those pumpkins off it and we've started using some of those but uh, we've got lots of green still going on in the back there and plenty of fruit still around that is yet to mature so that's doing quite well we do appear to have some hybrids in there the leaf shape is slightly different and the butternuts are stripy so they're I'm guessing they're probably let me walk in and show you I'm guessing they're probably cross-pollinated with a zucchini maybe I had a couple so Let's see if I can find them without walking into spider webs here we go so this is what the standard ones look like these little yellow butternuts and this is what some of them are looking like so obviously some cross pollination there's another stripy one over here on and they seem to have these really large leaf plants versus the slightly different butternut leaves so we shall see um, and look we've got more of these 28 spotted ladybugs which are driving me nuts our strawberries are doing really well so they're not fruiting very much at the moment because they're putting a lot of energy into runners there is still quite a bit of fruit in here um, but they are sending runners everywhere so I'm just redirecting them as I find them back into the garden beds and um, hopefully next year this bed will be full of plants and we'll get plenty of strawberries from that the raspberries still did nothing so these were bare root raspberries and they have done nothing the whole time so I'm guessing they didn't survive the transplant and we'll have to buy some new ones next year the Kajari melon is coming under attack by the 28 spotted lady beetle which is what's eating away at all the the leaves so we're not getting much fruit there's one there that's still ripening but um, the plants really aren't doing very well the we've got a couple of um, citrus here that we're having problems with because we have a couple of swallowtail like this this is a this here is the lava of course I cannot get it to focus come on oh, there's two of them so this is the problem so these here let's see if I why is this not working let me see if I can manually focus it there we go so that there is the caterpillar for a swallowtail butterfly but the problem is is that so is that and you can see him munching away at the leaves there oh. I'm really struggling with focus today there we go so you can see him munching away on the leaves there I can actually hear it happening so swallowtail caterpillars they consume a lot of the leaves uh, look we've got a third one there too that is building its chrysalis by the looks of it 
me see if I can get a better angle on that one because that's pretty neat. But we also have tiny baby ones. Let me see. Can you see that? So these trees are only first and second year and they can't handle this much. It will kill them. So what we have to do is when we see them we have to pull them off and get rid of them. Um, so Sonnet has been doing that for me lately but we obviously missed some. Let me see if I can get a better angle on the other one. So yeah, that's the orange trees. This is another one. And again, it's got quite a bit of foliage damage. So we need to make sure that there's not too many um, caterpillars on it. And then we have another one that, the, that we've been doing the same thing to. So Sonnet grabs some gloves so that she can help relocate the caterpillars yep yep both of those two need to be relocated so you want to grab them and go and take them out into the bush Where? just out onto the trees somewhere now the problem with swallowtail uh, caterpillars and butterflies is that they only eat citrus so by relocating these uh, caterpillars they won't survive probably but I also can't risk our first and second year citrus trees um, dying because they're eaten too much and they've already eaten large swathes of leaves of new leaves and foliage off this tree so I'm not willing to sacrifice the tree for a couple of butterflies so Sonnet is going to grab the other one that's on here as well. Yeah. It's got some silk on it, does it? Was it starting to create its cocoon, maybe? Cool, go and put it on a tree somewhere. So yeah, so whilst they won't survive, potentially we can't afford to sacrifice the trees for them. So this was the other Kajari melon that is being, all this lace work here is from the lady beetles. And look, you can see another one in there that needs squishing. So they are destroying that Kajari melon that would normally be all up over the trellis and it's just not doing what it needs to do. This is the uh, orange plant where I didn't realize what was happening until too late. So you can see there's entire branches. Let me see if I can get angle right. Entire, oh, I'm zoomed in still, I forgot. Entire branches that have been stripped and lots of foliage damage. So we got rid of the few extras that we saw on here last time. Um, and at the moment there is just this chrysalis that has a ready to go so we try and keep get rid of all the rest of the the ones that we can find but it's on it there's a 28 spread lady but you want to get that one with your gloves on just underneath there squish it So now we've let a couple hatch and that's all we're going to do. Now we need to kill any other ones or relocate them that we find. We have our finger lime here as well. It's first year as well. And then we have a tromboncino here, which is what Sonnet is squishing some lady beetles on. And we've got our first fruit on that one. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, not that... Yeah, there's nothing in that garden bed, is there? 
so yeah it's fine it's a first fruit there and I just noticed there's another one here and we've got noodle beans on this trellis that are hanging down Get more beans here as well okay, and this bed here is these are loofah which I'm hoping to get a whole bunch of loofah to use in my homemade soaps um, but we haven't got any fruit yet that I've seen just um, plenty of foliage and some spiders there we got some spiders in there as well and then it's just growing nice and thick I have to keep on turning it back down to the wire so it doesn't grow up over the solar panels so that it doesn't block the light and then a whole bunch of more noodle beans so we have more beans growing some pole beans and some noodle beans and they're all have had some pest damage but we are getting some beans off we picked a whole bunch yesterday so we shall see this bed is our melons a lot of rubbish lying around in this bed but they're just small mini uh, individual melons or jam melons um, and they haven't done particularly well we'll get what we get out of it and that's cool the butternuts decided to make a bit of an escape out of the edge of the thing here so we've got a fair few of them the plant coming out here and by the looks of it some fruit there's a flower there female flower with fruit on it there and there's some fruit in here and these are the striped ones so these are obviously the the cross pollinated ones but there's quite a few of those so that's kind of neat And then we have our fruit trees. Daryl whippersnipped along here this morning. We need to clean it up a bit more. The um, weeds were taking over a little bit. So we have some leaf cutter bees and obviously we have quite a lot of them because they do quite significant damage to the trees. Most of them have seemed to have tolerated it quite well but the peach tree on the end is a bit of an issue. So I'll show you that. But um, we've got lots of new growth really happy with how these have performed this year uh, just need to keep it up so there's plenty of new growth there's plenty of there's growth this one. yeah plenty of new growth points as well and they've gained some height i've planted comfrey at the base of the apple trees and we have the gray water drip irrigation that goes out to these this one has a couple of apples on it which probably needs to come off to be honest because it's probably far too young to be doing it and that branch is struggling so I either need to put some support in for that branch or just pop those apples off which no idea whether they will ripen or not with such a young tree anyway but we've got some great new growth on those branches as well crab apple there that's doing really well uh, spreading nicely I have a Jap uh, sorry Queensland blue pumpkin that I planted out here to take advantage of the grey water um, and it has just this one fruit on it which we'll see it's um, Daryl really likes the pumpkin so that's cool these apple trees have done exceptionally well they're quite tall so it come stand beside it and show how tall this one is so it's gone above sonnet's height which is really nice uh, this one these ones were um, new ones this year we bought them bare rooted this year the ones that we just saw before were that we bought bare rooted the year before but we replanted this year because they just weren't doing well where we had them so but we've got plenty of the extra height that has grown on these is lovely uh, more apples because apples were something that I really wanted to grow we just got different varieties what variety is that one what does it say apple pink lady so that one's a pink lady and then the we had two cherry trees but they just did not recover they were over in the other location and we put them here and we planted pumpkin in the bottom of that one as well but it hasn't done much either and then this is the peach tree that's looking really sad so the leaf cutter bees really really liked the peach tree and the peach tree is struggling so I'm not entirely sure what we can do about it because I'm not willing to do anything with the leaf cutter bees so we'll have to just 
hope that it recovers I suppose but they're looking really nice for what um how we've done I'm really happy with how they've progressed this year and we're going to put some uh, weed mat fabric all the way in this whole area and some wood chips to try and protect them a little bit from the the uh, growth that comes in from the side and we are eventually going to put a fence I think just here um, which will so that we can eventually net the trees if we need to uh, we maybe this winter we'll aim to pull up to cut up all this wood that's in this pile here so that when we put the fence in then we don't need to access that anymore um, this is where from when they cleared the land they just pushed everything to the perimeter and then when we had to return the shipping containers that we had they also created a bit more mounding so we need to get rid of that wood and then we'll put a fence line in all the way along here uh, which will help make a break from this all this overgrown grass and that way we can protect the trees a little bit better from the overgrowth so that they don't get choked out by the the overgrowth so that's the garden at the moment as at the 31st of january so i'm starting the clean up and the starting of plants for uh the next round i've got some cucumber seeds going and we have a nft hydroponic system that we got off ebay cheap that we're going to try and grow some lettuce and stuff in because we don't have much success with that in the beds in the ground so we're going to try doing that on some nft so we've got some fresh lettuce and stuff and maybe some more basil because my basil hasn't done real well this year so we're going to start doing the plants soon over the next four to six weeks for for autumn uh, do cabbages and cucumbers and things like that some brass some other brassicas and and more turnips beetroots um, all that sort of stuff so as I do that I will share along I bought myself a soil blocker so I'm still learning with that and figuring that out and the hothouse will need to be cleaned up before it can be used because at the moment it's filthy from uh, when I planted everything else out and then and didn't get a chance to clean it all up so there we go so there is heaps and heaps of space that is unused in this garden at the moment and plenty of weed and press pre pest pressure i think a lot of the pest pressure is potentially caused from the weeds from all the grass and the weeds that are everywhere so the aim is to get the weed matting fabric and the hardwood wood chipping and covering all the paths and unused spaces so that we can suppress the weeds and then if we don't have as many weeds they're not going to have as many grasshoppers and things like that because they're not going to have the homes around so that is the aim over this uh autumn and winter to get ready for next spring and I'd really like to double or triple what I've managed to do this year next year because uh, some of the stuff has been a bit lackluster and it's somewhat disappointing we have got we have been getting tomatoes galore um, like four kilos four or five kilos every second day or so and I have canned probably 20 jars of roasted tomatoes and put them on the shelf so that's that's great uh, but we could do a lot more like if we had more we could do sauces and all sorts of things but at the moment we don't have enough to do the extras so we're just doing roasted tomatoes and I'll use them accordingly but we'll still have to purchase tomatoes during the year so anyway that's it 31st of January and the garden and hopefully we will do a little bit better next year and that I'll look back on this video and I'll be really excited by how much further I've come next year but in the meantime we need to get ready for the next season and we will do that in and get going for autumn planting and things like that and cleaning up what we've got here I'd really like to just clean it up a lot so that's what we're going to aim to do so I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the garden and if you're in America or the northern hemisphere I hope that it has really uh, been great to see all the green and the plants because I know that a lot of you are under snow at the moment so um, that's it for me and I will see you next time please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when we release new content it's very much appreciated